So, found these in Math 20. Um, Z scores, section 5.5. Now, if you are, I don't know if you say Z, Z, or if you say this Z. We are in Canada, so typically it's Z, but I've heard some, uh, there's some rebels uh, around that refuse to say Z, that only say Z. You've been influenced by the American media. Sorry if you're from America. I know the song doesn't work if it's if you say Z. I know. X, Y, and Z. Don't want to play with me. I know it doesn't rhyme when we say Z, but we're different in Canada. Okay. So if we could just quiet. Let me try this again. See, when my hands go like this, that means I need the volume to come down. Oh, that worked pretty good. Okay. Z scores. All right. So here's the thing. We talked about the normal. Shh, thank you. The normal distribution. Is it working now? Yes. We talked about the normal distribution. That was like the bell curve, right? Can we find a bell curve? Oh, there's a bell curve. Okay, so we worked with this yesterday. What did we find? We found that this middle is the mean, okay? The average of the group goes right here in the middle. We calculated the standard deviation. That is how dispersed or how spread out the data is. Uh, if we go back to our notes. Hello, notes. Are you here? Hello. They should be here, but they're not. Computers. Love them when they work, and not so much when they don't. But where are we? Yesterday, here's a question that... Now, I think I, rec I, think I ha recorded the answer to this question. I don't think I did this in class. Maybe we started talking about it. But anyways, if you want to know how to do this question from 5.4. But anyways, so standard uh, normal curve. And if the, the data is more spread out, the curve looks kind of shorter and wider. Okay, So there's more data, it's more spread out. So standard deviation, okay, this one right here is one standard deviation away from the mean. This is two, okay, we know that. A z-score, why do we need something called a z-score? Uh, let's take a look at example two, okay? Let's take a look at example two. Using z-scores to determine the percent of data less than a given value. So this is the percentile ranking one that I want to talk about. So if we're talking about test marks or if we're talking about... Um, IQ, let's say, you want to be as far above the mean as possible to, you know, to do, be doing better or to be having a higher value than most of the population. So if we take a look at the Z scores or look, take a look at the uh, normal distribution, if you have a Z score <clears throat> that is one, that means, let's just zoom in here, if you have a Z score that's one, that means your uh, IQ would be at this point right here. So the mean plus one standard deviation. Okay, so remember the Z scores refer to how many standard deviations you are above or below the mean. So if you have a Z score, and this person had, a, in, as far as this IQ thing goes, had a Z score of about 1.27, on the graph, they their mark lies about here. Okay? And so basically, they there's about this many people that are above uh, his or her score and there's this many people that she would have uh, outscored okay in this IQ test or was there in a general population so 1.27 right about there okay let's talk about a z-score table okay so what is the z-score table all about and I haven't been giving you a lot of chance to write anything down here um, so did you guys write down anything about a z-score? Let's just go back there real quick. So you should write this down right here if you haven't already. So take a moment to do that. The z-score is a standardized value that indicates the number of standard deviations of a data value above or below the mean. So if you have a z-score of 1, you are one standard deviation above the mean. If you have a z-score of 1.5, you're one and a half standard deviations above the mean. That's what that z-score means. And kind of after you've got that uh, written down, summarized there, you should write down this formula right here, uh, over here. That's how you calculate the z-score. Okay, so the z-score is a standardized value that indicates the number of standard deviations of a data value above or below the mean. If we take a look at the formula over here, to calculate a z-score, you would take 
This would be your value, or the particular value that you're trying to find the z-score for. You would subtract the mean, okay, that's the same as x bar. So this would be x minus x bar. And then you divide it by the actual value of the standard deviation. Okay? And so, of course, if you, have, if you have a value that is equal to the mean, so let's say you have a value that's equal to the mean, and then what's going to happen is this is going to be 0 over whatever the standard deviation is, so then you're going to have a z-score of 0. So that's if you're actually at the mean. If you're greater than the mean, then you will have a number that's larger than the standard deviation here. Um, so a number that's larger than the mean divided by the standard deviation will give you that z-score. Okay? So we'll do a little example about that later. So as we continue on with this example, or with the z-score table, so this z-score table tells you um, basically how much uh, the fraction area, the fraction of the data with the z-score that is less than the given data value. So it's how much of the data is less than that score. So if this person had a z-score of 1.27 on this IQ test, so we could look at the z-score table and find out what percentage of the population that relates to. So I'm not sure if on your calculators you have a function on your calculator for z-scores. I don't think most do, but maybe some of yours might. But the z-score table is in your textbook, and I think it said it was what, page 592 and 93? Okay. So just take a look at your textbook there, 592, see if you can find that. You guys see that? It's right after the index there should be. So this, this is what it looks like right here. Okay, your z-score table. So it's up on the screen. All right, so one point, what was it, 1.27 this person had? 1.27 for a uh, z-score. So what is that, how does that relate to the percentages of, uh, you know, people that would be, have a score less than that? So what we do is we go over to the, um, on the left column here, it has basically the first decimal place, and the top part has the second decimal place. So what you do for 1.27, you start off at 1.2 down here, and then you go across on that column until you get to 0.7, and find out where 1.2 and 0.7 intersect. So this is again 1.27, see that? So a z-score of 1.27 has this number attached to it. This number is basically the decimal form of the percent of scores that would be less than that z-score. So if this person got uh, an IQ that was whatever, and the z-score for that IQ measurement was 1.27, there are 89.8% of all other people would have an IQ less. Okay, that, that's, what that, that's what that means. So you can look up any z-score here and from this table determine what's the percentage of people that would be underneath on that, uh, on that graph. Okay? Make sense? Question? Yeah? What is the number that you're looking at? A z-score of 1.27. Yes, the z-score would be the number that we would get from this formula. Okay, so we'll do we'll do an example from scratch. Okay, right now we'll do an example from scratch. So if you go back to your five point five in your text there. So let's do what was the one I had here? Yeah, example three, I guess. Let's do example three from your from your text. Athletes should replace their running shoes before their shoes lose the ability to absorb shock. Running shoes lose their shock absorption after a mean distance of 640 kilometers. So that number 640 would be right about there on our standard uh, normal distribution. It has a standard deviation of 160 kilometers. So this would be 640 and then this right here value is one standard deviation away and that is 640 plus 160. 
right? This is 640 plus 160 plus 160 would be at the 2 there. So Zach is an elite runner and wants to replace his shoes at a distance when only 25% of people would replace their shoes. Okay. At what distance should he replace his shoes? So in this type of question, we're dealing with a, a bell curve, a normal curve, and we're basically looking for 25% right here. So what value, this one right here, what value is this that would cause 25% of people to be uh, under there? Okay, so we need 25% to be under here. So what we're going to do is we're going to first look up the Z score that would relate to 25%. So in your table, and again, you can check your table. This is a little s snippet of the table. Okay, we're looking at this number. This is the number now we're looking for something that's as close to 25 percent, 0.25, as possible on the Z table. Right? So 0.2514 is as close as we get. So what's the Z score there? Negative 0.67. See that? So this Z score right here is negative 0.67. 25% relates to a z-score of negative 0.67. So we're now going to use, um, we're going to use our formula, and we're going to fill in all the values to find out what the actual x value is. And that x value will give us a, um, a, a distance, right? A kilometer value. So remember, 640 is right here. 640 minus 160, is that 480, is right here. So we're going to look for, he's going to, probably change his shoes at a distance right just above you know 480 somewhere between 480 and 640 okay and here's the worked out solution so I'll just kind of go over this real quick um, you don't have to write this out just just watch so this is the Z score at negative 0.67 now I think they use 675 because um, you know 0.25 <clears throat> is going to be somewhere between here and here you see that between those two values so that's why they said, hey, 25 is actually there, so can we estimate one more decimal place? So, yes, to be exact, you should do that. You can pick 0.67, but if you can go to another decimal place, you can estimate one more. So to be really exact, they put this Z score in, and the mean we know is 640, the standard deviation is 160. You do a little manipulation, multiply both sides by 160 and solve for x and you get an answer of 532. Okay, So that means that on this normal distribution 25 percent of people less than a score would be right about here. The z score we looked it up. We used the formula to find out now what actual distance that is. 532. So Z Zach should replace his shoes after 532 kilometers. Any questions about that? Okay. All right. So calculating Z score is pretty easy. Just use the formula. So I tell you what. Why don't you guys uh, let's do a question. You guys can do a question from your assignment and uh, give that a try, and we'll see we'll see how you're doing with it. Okay, so uh, in question number one, you're just using that formula to calculate a z-score. Question number two, you're using the z-table to determine the percent of data that's to the left of the z-score. Number three, you're determining the percent of the data between the z-scores, and so you just have to do two calculations and subtract them. Okay, And then number four is uh, finding the z-score that approximates these percents. So that should be pretty straightforward. Let's get to a question. Actually, let's do uh, let's do let's do this one because we haven't done an example like this. So let's do number three A. Okay, do three A. That'll give you a good shot at um, seeing if you understand. So take a moment, do three.